Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, this video we're going to look at employee motivation a little more in depth. Um, and then we're going to look at one specific uh, management um, motivation theory, which is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So motivating employees is really important. We've spoken about meeting expectations and then they should be satisfied in their job. And then we want to actually motivate them because we want them to work hard and be productive. So by providing or, or motivating employees should increase productivity. Uh, motivation is what drives a person to behave in a certain way. So for example, what makes you uh, want to study hard? What's your motivation for studying hard? Is it that you want to get into a, a university? Uh, is it that you want a particular job? Is it just that you have pride? Whatever it is, whatever the motivation is for you to actually go out and um, do study and revision, that's motivation. So what motivates people? That's a big question and a common answer is that, well, money motivates people. And what you'll find in these theories, so the research shows that, yet yeah, that money is important, don't get me wrong, but that it's other things that are actually more important. Um, and just think, if someone told you that you think of the worst job possible, so there's lots of different theories um, that have been conducted by research to show uh, what motivates employees, but we have to look at three. And the three that we must, and you need to know all of, the, all of them because in the exam and in your SACs, they can ask specifically about any of these three. Um, so these are the three, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Hertzberg's two-factor theory, and Locke's goal-setting theory. And we're gonna, first of all, look at Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This theory, it's based around, well, it's a hierarchy, and it's based around um, the theory that employees are motivated to satisfy five specific needs, and they are physiological, safety, belongingness and love, self-esteem and self-actualization, and they work in that order. Um, the, there are lower order of needs, so the lower order from the bottom are physiological, safety, belongingness and love, self-esteem, self-actualization, they go in that order. And so the lower order of needs need to be satisfied first before an employee will be motivated by the next level. So for example, physiological, the way the theory works is that that's you know, your normal food and water and shelter. And if you don't have that, you will be motivated that by that until it is satisfied. Once it's been satisfied and you've got enough food, you've got enough shelter and water, you will then be motivated by how safe you are. Okay, and it continues on. Then you'll want relationships, then you'll want to feel good about yourself with self-esteem and self-actualization is about achieving your absolute best. So that's how the theory works. And we can apply that theory, because it wasn't made for employees, but we can apply that theory to employees, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, so while a need is unsatisfied, it remains a motivator and dominates thoughts until it is fulfilled. So let's say, for example, um, you're in the workplace and you're not feeling safe in your workplace in terms of job security. That's gonna be your number one uh, motivator, according to this theory. You won't be motivated by having strong relationships. The main thing you'll be worried about is making sure you've got enough job security. Once that's satisf satisfied, then uh, Maslow says that you will then be motivated by relationships and so on the, up the hierarchy you go. So once a satisfied employee moves up to the next level, if needs are unfulfilled, an organisation can expect increased turnover and decreased performance because um, we want to push them up to those higher order of needs of self-esteem and self-actualisation because that is where that the employee, the individual, really starts to try and achieve their best. The first three, those lower order of needs, are where they're just trying to get themselves settled and, and meet expectations um, in the organisation, but then the self-esteem and self-actualisation is where the employer can really achieve. So let's look at human resource management and Maslow's theory. Um, human resource manager could use um, the theory to motivate their employees. So one way is they could identify where a particular employee or staff member was on the hierarchy, and then implement some strategies to satisfy and move them up to the higher levels. So if it was that um, it was they were motivated by job security, then it might be reassurance that they're safe in their job, or it could be that you could um, put them on a longer contract. 
Now, it's important to note that employees can be at different levels, so not everyone in an organisation. And remember, remember, we're talking about large organisations here, so there's at least 200 employees um, that those employees will often be at different levels. So some will be right up the top, some will be right down the bottom and everything in between. So there, there may be a variety of strategies that need to be implemented. So let's look at an example. So here's Jerry. He's our manager. Um, think of any organisation you want, but that's Jerry. Now he's got lots of employees, but we're going to look at two specifically. So here's Adam. Adam is a bit lonely and he's motivated by better relationships. He wants better relationships with his uh, em fellow employees. So he's got an entry level job. He feels safe in his job, but he wants better relationships. So that's his motivation. Then we have Paul, now he is a bit nervous because he's worrying about job security. He doesn't feel safe in his job. So these are two different employees that Jerry has, um, and obviously he's gonna have a lot more, but these are just two examples. So what can Jerry do? Well, first of all, he may um, say to everyone in the organization that we're going 10 pin bowling on a Friday night and have a few drinks after work. That's gonna help build relationships with the employees so you get to know each other better, you can have a bit of a laugh together outside of work. So he sets that up, and that's a legitimate strategy that he could use. And for poor old Paul over here, who's worried about his, about his job, um, Jerry could give him a longer term contract um, so that it could be you know, that he was on a three month contract, now he's on 12 months or two year contract and that ensures his job security. So putting in place those strategies, and they could be any strategy, there's many, many uh, different strategies that you could use, but they would then push those employees up to the next level. So once Adam's been satisfied by um, his relationships, which is the belongingness and love type area, he's then gonna be motivated, he's into the higher order of needs and motivated by self-esteem. Now, Paul, on the other hand, who was worried about job security, Jerry provides him with that job security. They're also going out for the strategies already in place that they're, you know, every Friday night or every couple of Friday nights, they're going out 10 pin bowling together and having a good laugh together. Then that's being satisfied. So he also moves up to the self-esteem. And then it's Jerry's um, job to implement strategies to try and get them up to self-actualization. So that's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So just to recap, it's a hierarchy of needs where there's five levels. Down the bottom is physiological. The next level is safety, uh, moving up to belongingness and love. Then once that's satisfied, uh, they'll be motivated by self-esteem and finally self-actualization. So the lower levels need to be satisfied before the employer will be motivated by the next level. And it's important to note that employees can be at different stages on the hierarchy. So a variety of strategies need to be implemented. For more videos and practice sacks, go to teachingbubble.com.